Hello everyone and welcome to a coding challenge, the first one since March of 2020. And what I am going to attempt to do today is make my own version of this project. This is not my idea. Uh, this came across my Twitter desk the other day from Cameron Hunter, who created a video lens that uses hand gestures to show comic book style messages instead in a video call. You know, I don't know if you've noticed in this year of 2020, lots of stuff is happening. Aye. Many of us, including myself, are spending a large amount of time in video calls, um, and I want to see if I can figure out a way using the tools of P5JS, ML5JS, Teachable Machine, and Open Broadcast Studio, and Zoom as the video conference uh, software of choice, not a sponsor. <laughs> you could use anyone that you want, but I'm going to attempt to use Zoom and see if I can create my own overlays that are controlled with my own gestures. That's what's going to happen today. I have not attempted this at any point in the past, present, or future, so here we go. To be honest, there's probably not gonna be a ton of coding in this, uh, although I will be writing code. Um, and mostly I'm going to be like plugging in this piece of software to this piece of software and this piece of software. Lots of connectors and tubes and cables and things, but all um, happening on the computer because I'm much too afraid to use that stuff in real physical life. So let me talk through what the components are. What I'm going to have ultimately is a video feed where, for example, when I raise my hand, and apparently I can't draw, that's me raising my hand, I might have a pop-up that says, you know, question. A big pop-up so that the uh, other people in the room can see that I'm raising my hand and I have a question. So to do this, I'm gonna use uh, P5JS to connect to my camera and show my camera feed. Then I'm going to use a teachable machine to train a machine learning model to recognize my particular gestures. So just as a point out, if you're, you should be able to do this yourself at the end of this video, and you won't even have to write any of your own code, you could reuse my code, but almost certainly, well, definitely, you will need to train your own model. So I'll talk about how to do that. So once I have that, um, and then uh, I'm gonna talk to the teachable machine model with ML5.js. So all of these components will be running in a web browser. This is all inside the web browser. Then, I'm going to use a piece of software called OBS, our Open Broadcast Studio. It is the software I'm using right now to live stream, to record to disk. It is software that I use for uh, making YouTube videos. But what I can do with OBS, one of the things I can do is I can uh, capture everything that's in the browser. So the browser is gonna be sent into OBS and then this picture, boy this diagram is terrible, <laughs> you will see in OBS. Then, from OBS, I'm gonna start something called a virtual camera. So I'm going to trick the computer into thinking that the Open Broadcast Studio software is my webcam. So when I log into a Zoom meeting, and there is a grid of people, and this is me here, I will select the OBS virtual cam as my video input. So instead of picking the default, you know, if I'm on a Mac, it's gonna say like FaceTime camera, I'm gonna to switch to OBS virtual camera. This is not the only way to do this. <laughs> as you can see uh, in the project I referenced where I got this idea from, uh, it's using something like Snap Lens Studio something. I'm sure there are countless other ways you could approach this. I, I'm hoping this is gonna work. Again, I haven't tried this yet, so it remains to be seen. All right, let's do the first part, train the model. So I'm going to go to the Teachable Machine uh, website. If you want to learn more about Teachable Machine, I have three videos that I've already made about how to train a model and use it with P5, and, and you can do stuff with audio. There's lots of stuff there. Google has a lot of resources. It's, a, um, it's made by uh, folks at the Google Creative Lab. I'm just gonna click on to get started. I wanna do an image project because I wanna train a model from my, on, on me. So I'm just gonna do background. Background being like me not doing anything, just me just kind of sitting in the meeting like this trying to make eye contact with people over a computer through a web. Have you ever tried, it doesn't work. How do you make the eye contact? And then the next uh, category will be question. So I wanna click webcam. Uh, you can see I've already installed, by the way, virt OBS virtual camera on this computer. So you can see this is like, it's already available, but that's not what I want right now. I want the FaceTime camera. And I just wanna like record myself here. So that's probably good enough. <laughs> and then I wanna do the question. I'm gonna to try to get about the same amount of samples, like 238. Okay, and then I'm gonna train this model. I get to take a little break here. 
Remember the Don't Switch Tabs song? Don't switch the tabs. Don't switch the tabs. Oh, it trained. Okay. So let's see if it's working. Background. Question. Background. Question. So this is perfect. So now I have a model trained. It's very important. I mean, even though I talk about all this in the Teachable Machine videos, and I'm trying not to do this now, it's important for me to emphasize this is not doing any kind of gesture recognition. This is pure image classification. So it's not going to work if I gave this model to you and you're wearing a different shirt, and you have different hair, you're not wearing glasses, your background is different. Um, so this is the kind of thing that every person would have to customize, which I think is nice because you can make up your own gestures and different things and everybody moves in different ways and does different types of things. So now export model. So I'm going to upload the model. Now I have the URL right here, which I'm going to click copy. Then I'm going to go over to the ML5 code example. So let's call this zoom annotations. I don't know if that makes sense. Just want to simplify this example. It actually has some extra stuff in it that I don't need. Um, and let's run it. So this is the example that comes with ML5. Um, and it, it's just actually, it's a pre-trained model that is showing, that has two categories, daytime or nighttime. So it's hard to make a model that people can universally test and use, but this is one. And now, so now, in theory, if I were to go and paste the URL, remember, where did I get that from? Right from here, this shareable link of the model, I'm gonna paste it in here. I've pasted it in and I'm going to run the example again. So this, this will hopefully be fixed by the time you watch this video. I, I actually updated the examples. It needs to also have uh, added the, uh, the, to the end of the URL, I need to add plus model.json. That's what ML5 is looking for, that particular JSON file that holds the information about the model. Background, question. Background, question. All right, let's get at least a quick pop-up of a question mark to appear um, when I say I have a question. Before I do that, let me make a couple quick changes. I want to just um, make this a little bit bigger. Uh, and then I want the, I'm always gonna have the video size match um, the canvas size. And then I actually don't wanna draw the text label. That's not something I'm doing. Um, so let me just make sure this works still and we see it a little bit bigger. So I should be able to say now, if label equals question, draw something else. And I happen to have a thank you to Jason Hegland, who is the coding train illustrator, makes all the characters. Let's try using uh, this one. Um, so I should be able to upload a file and drag it here. It's kind of like a weird name. What, let me just rename this. I'm just going to call it a uh, question.png. And then in the sketch, uh, I want to say question and I'll preload that image preload a question.png. Then let us try to say image question zero zero. So I'm not really being thoughtful about this. Let's just see if it appears. Whoops. What happened? Preload. No, the function name is load image. This is me trying to do stuff way too quickly and making weird mistakes. <laughs> Guess what folks? I named my labels with a capital Q. Capital first letter. Okay. So one thing I really want to do, which I feel like is important here, is to kind of debounce this a little bit. So I feel like if it's going to appear, I don't want it to uh, disappear immediate, like I don't want it to flicker. So I'll just gonna always have it fade out. So let me just, I think I can use, I mean, I should make like an object. There's all sorts of ways I could engineer this in a really thoughtful way. I'm gonna make a variable called uh, fade out equal to 255. And then whenever I detect a particular label, I'll say fade out equals 255. Bear with me, I'm gonna have to think about how to do this with multiple things, but let me just get this to work right now. Fade out minus equals five, let's make minus equals 10. Um, if fade out greater than zero, uh, image question. So, and actually fade out should be zero. So you know what, this is, this is why I need to like wrap these two things together into like an object or something, but let's just have question fade be at zero. And what I'm really doing is I'm setting question fade 
to 255 whenever I get that label. And then I'm always fading it out and I'm only drawing it if I have uh, a value greater than zero. And just for efficiency's sake, I'll also just fade it out when it's greater than zero. So this should now, um, it should always, it shouldn't like flicker, like, uh, oh, I, I have to, sorry. I, that's actually like just leaving it there. I was actually gonna fade it. So I was gonna say tint question fade, which I, I realized it actually is, I debounced it just by not even having it fade, but. Oh, hello. <laughs> that tint applies to everything. Whoa, that was weird. Oh, maybe, maybe I need to do this. So I'm definitely fading. Oh, I'm just fading the brightness. There we go. That's what I was looking to do. So that's, I, was, I want the brightness to always be at 255, but I want to fade the alpha. Okay, so now let's see if we can get this into a Zoom meeting. Now, obviously, of course, we could spend hours making like little animations and training different gestures. And after I get it all working, I want to spend a little time making a version of this with, a, with some animations and different things. But I just want to see if I can at least get this into a Zoom meeting. So the first thing I need to do is open up Open Broadcast Studio. So this is the website for OBS Studio. It's open source. And so I already have that on my computer. I'm gonna uh, open it up. When you open it up, it should look blank, just like this. It's an empty window. So I, I have a scene. That's what's down here. I can make multiple scenes, but I just wanna use the default scene. Now I need a source. Ultimately, what I probably want to do, and I'll see if I can get this working later, is select a video capture device I'm gonna call this a webcam, and I'm going to pick my webcam and have that be the sort of main element of the scene. And then the other stuff would be an overlay over it, which I think I have an idea of how to do. But right now I'm just gonna to try to get the raw browser window <laughs> into, into this. So it won't be pixel perfect in terms of resolution and everything, but it'll be a start. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that out. And I'm going to say, I think it's window capture. And I want to capture uh, P5 web editor. And I think the best way for me to do this is to uh, go to uh, share. Let's take the present mode and open a, a new window, paste it in there. Let's see if it's working. Great, okay, so now, uh, in OBS, I want to take the one that says Google Chrome Webcam Image Classification. So I want to take that. Then I'm going to use the Option key to like just crop around the part that I want. Again, this is silly. There are some better ways that I could do this, probably. But I'm just going to crop around the part that I want. And then I will uh, stretch it out. And now I've got it in OBS. And whenever I raise my hand, uh, it's happening. Okay, you can see the frame rate is really low. I'm gonna work on a way to fix this. The next thing that I wanna do is start the OBS virtual camera. I, that is an option I have over here under tools, start virtual camera. That does not come by default with OBS uh, Studio. It's Dan from the future coming in to let you know some breaking news. Coding train breaking news. In the latest version of Open Broadcast Studio version 26, on Windows only, the virtual camera is built in. It looks like this. There's a button that you can press, start virtual camera. But this won't be available on Mac, although probably by the time you're watching this in the future, your future, it might be. Um, you'll, the rest of this video will show you how to get the uh, plug-in extensions that you need to run a virtual camera. But if you're on Windows running OBS 26, you're good to go. Back to the past. And for Mac, there's this particular uh, OBS um, virtual cam that you can just download and run the installer right here. And I'll include links to both of these for Mac and Windows in the video's description. And somebody in the chat telling me there's a way to use V4L to sync on Linux. So I've started the virtual camera and now I need to go into a Zoom meeting. Let's go into the meeting. So normally if I start my video, this is just me in the Zoom meeting uh, with this uh, the video, that's the webcam. And now I should be able to go over here and change to OBS virtual camera. Oh, shoot, I forgot that I opened it up here. And there we go, here we go. I'm in the Zoom meeting. Hi everybody, oh, oh, this is such a great, 
discussion class thingy. Oh, 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 me, me, oh, it's reversed. So because it's flipped, because Zoom is trying to make it a nice experience for me, I'm gonna uncheck this mirror my video. And I've already mirrored it in my own software. And now, I have a question. So I wanna think about ways to improve this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna make a 1280 by 720 canvas. I'm going to make the video as small as possible. So let's see, even if I do it like 160 by 120, and I'm going to hide it. I'm not going to hide it. I want to see that video separately. And then I don't want to draw the video. Instead, I just want to see the image pop up. So let's see if this works. So I've got my video at the bottom and I'm able to get the question mark to pop up. Great. So now I'm going to go to the present view again. I moved the camera around, which I think is causing a bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to retrain the model, which I'll do. But let me go back to here. This is working pretty well. And I want to change the background to a pure green. And you'll see why in a second. Now this should run much faster. I don't need a high resolution video to do the classification. And I'm also not drawing it. So it's much less work for me not to actually draw the video, just draw this. Because now what I can do in Open Broadcast Studio I can actually just add my camera source directly. So I want to add the FaceTime camera. I'm going to stretch it out to take up the full, and you can see the frame rate is very fluid here. Then I'm going to add as another scene, a <coughs> window capture, and I'm going to um, get the browser. I want to grab this, which is here. I'm going to hit OK. Um, I'm going to stretch this out but I'm going to crop it around the canvas. I'm going to fill the window basically with it. Then um, I'm going to add a filter in OBS. I'm gonna go to filters. I'm gonna add an effect filter. I'm gonna go to chroma key. And I want to chroma key the green out. The default's gonna work really well. I have a perfect chroma key because I drew the green itself. And now, there we go. And I have no frame rate issues. Pops right up. Oh, it's time for my Zoom meeting. I'm so excited. It's time to be on Zoom for the 15th hour of the day. Oh, OBS, I need to make sure I am running my virtual camera. I want to join my test meeting. Um, now I'm in the meeting. I'm going to turn on my video. Hello, friends. Welcome to class today on Zoom. If you have a question, please raise your hand. All right, uh, this works. Ah, I'm so glad. This actually works quite well. Let's have a little bit more fun. Here are all the steps you need to do one at a time. First, collect images for any label that you want to define in Teachable Machine. I'm using question, yes, no, love, and funny, but obviously you can make up your own. And I'm also using one called background for a neutral position when I'm not doing anything and I don't want to show any annotations. Train the model. Then upload the model. Copy paste the model URL into your code. You can find the code in the link in this video's description. Upload any images and animations you want to use to your P5.js sketch. Add an if statement for each label to either draw one of those images or any code that you want to write, really. Once you're done coding, run your P5 sketch in present view. Now you can move on over to Open Broadcast Studio. Create a scene in OBS. Add a video capture device and select your camera. Then add window capture and select the browser window that's running your P5.js sketch, crop and resize accordingly. If necessary, add a chroma key filter. Start the Open Broadcast Studio virtual camera. Then move on over to Zoom and select as your video source the OBS virtual camera. Then fame and fortune await you as you entertain your friends and teachers in Zoom. 
All right, I hope you were able to follow those steps. I cannot wait to see if anybody actually takes this methodology and applies it to a real live Zoom meeting. I, in fact, did just that. After I recorded this tutorial, I had a quick Zoom call with some friends of the coding train that I sent the steps, and I'm going to show that to you right now, and you can sort of see what it looks like in real live Zoom. During this meeting, I thought, ah, of all these new ideas of things that I could try beyond just loading an image and displaying the image, the first thing I thought of is, okay, <laughs> I'm programming in P5.js. There's lots of things I could do beyond just load an image and display it. I have the full range of possible things I can code in P5. One of the things that I think would be is really fun to try is just any coding challenge I made with any generative art visualization, I could use that as an overlay. So I could strike poses to set off heart-shaped fireworks. What if every time I wear my party rock glasses, I also get a party rock hat, which follows my head using PoseNet. If you're watching this, I really hope you have your own creative idea for something you want to try, something you've already made in P5 that you want to have running live in real time in a Zoom meeting. Maybe you're visualizing data, it's just some sort of art, it's augmenting your body or your poses. You don't even need to show your video at all. You could just be showing other stuff in your Zoom. Anything you could do in P5.js with Open Broadcast Studio and a virtual camera, you can show in a video call. If you make something, I really want you to share it with me. Probably the easiest way for you to do it is on Twitter at Schiffman, but also um, if you go to the web page for this video, it's a kind of a more permanent place, you can submit a link to any documentation of what you've done. One important thing to note, and hopefully you're thinking about this already, is that if you're capturing a Zoom meeting, so, so for one, maybe just capture it with just you in it, and that's what you share with me, but if there are other participants, um, make sure you have their consent, you've asked for their permission before you share any images or snapshots of that Zoom meeting online. All right, that's, that's all I've got for today. <laughs> Thanks for watching this coding challenge. Go and bring some delight to somebody's day. Uh, and I know you're going to be in a lot of video calls, but if you can take a break from that and safely get some fresh air, I highly recommend that to you. And I will see you in a future coding challenge. Goodbye. Mwah.